If you're a fan of Indiana Jones movies, then stick around, because you're about to discover 12 behind-the-scenes facts about Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. In one scene, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery weren't wearing any pants, which was the Zeppelin scene while they were sitting at the table. The reason they went pantless was because the set was very hot, but they had to be dressed up like it was winter. Since Sean Connery sweats very easily, he decided to film the whole scene without his pants on to keep himself cool, and Harrison Ford decided to follow his lead. George Lucas wanted the entire story to be set at a haunted castle, but Steven Spielberg didn't want to do another scary movie because he had just finished Poltergeist, and he also wanted the indie franchise to be lighthearted again after Temple of Doom. So Lucas revised the castle scene to be at the beginning of the movie, and the Holy Grail idea was used as a means to explore Indy's relationship with his father. The filmmakers created their own rats. In order to use rats that didn't have any infectious diseases, meant that the filmmakers had to breed the rats to use for the movie, so they contacted some rat breeders to have 2,000 rats to use for the catacomb scene. However, fake mechanical rats were used for the shots when the waters lit on fire so no actual rat was harmed in the making of this movie. Indiana Jones films are filled with James Bond references, because before filming Raiders, Steven Spielberg had wanted to direct a James Bond movie. For example, the tuxedo Indy wears at the beginning of Temple of Doom is very James Bond-like, as is the way he introduces Short Round at the palace. This is Mr. Round. Short Round. Even more references can be found in The Last Crusade, with the casting of a former Bond girl Alison Doody, the original Bond actor Sean Connery, who was shot by former Bond villain Julian Glover with 007's signature handgun, the Walther PPK. Real seagulls weren't used in the movie. The reason is because seagulls aren't trainable, so the seagulls that lined the beach were all fake, and pigeons were released in the air instead because they can be trained. The role of young Indy was chosen by Harrison Ford, the late River Phoenix, who as a bonus fact is related to Joaquin Phoenix, had worked with Harrison Ford on the movie Mosquito Coast as Ford's on-screen son, and it was Ford who suggested they use Phoenix to play young Indy, because Harrison said he looked a lot like River when he was younger. Harrison Ford's scar is actually real, and if you ever wondered how he got it, it was from a car crash he had in his 20s when he ran the car off the road and crashed into a telephone pole. A dangerous water tank set was built for the propeller scene. The propeller was designed specifically for the movie, and was so large that the water underneath it had to be about 15 feet deep. It was a dangerous stunt because the propeller really did chop up the boat, but they designed it to be much longer than it really was, and filmed with a long telephoto lens to make the actors appear closer to the propeller than they really were. Harrison Ford isn't the only actor to appear in the original trilogy. Pat Roach appeared in Raiders as a thug in Marion's pub and the shirtless Nazi. In Temple of Doom, he played the big thug in the mine scene, and he only makes a very short appearance on the Last Crusade Zeppelin scene, because a fight between he and Indy was cut to speed up the pace of the story. Two really odd sounds were used in the movie. The sound of earthquake tremors in the film's climax were designed from the sound of rubbing two balloons together, and the rat noises were actually taken from chickens and then adjusting their pitch with a keyboard. The single most difficult effect to create in the movie was the Leap of Faith scene. They used a life-size set for the shots of the cliff wall where Indy enters the scene, but a miniature scene was used to create the invisible bridge reveal. The most amazing part of it all is that this was before heavy CGI use, so the top of the bridge and the huge chasm below it were all painted by hand to create the illusion. Walter Donovan's death was a huge technical achievement. The rapid degradation of Julian Glover's villainous character Walter Donovan was the first complete digital composite shot in Hollywood history. Glover was reportedly filmed in several separate stages of the aging process, which were digitally melded together with shots of three puppet heads in different stages of decay, and then everything was translated back to film as one cohesive take. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, and click on another video to keep learning more fun facts about your favorite films.